Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we are going to be going over a few things. There have been some updates, some bug fixes and some compensation sent out. There is also going to be a new onslaught coming into the game and it's going to be Halloween themed. Creepy onslaught. There are some changes there that we're going to take a look at and there is of course the trick or treat roadmap where you can spend those pails which you have been so patiently collecting and waiting to use. First up, we're going to go over the bug fixes and we are going to go over the free gift that everyone is going to receive. This was posted yesterday and it does say we wanted to bring to light a pressing issue involving Lee and his normalized resistance effect. We're aware that the duration of the effect is lasting indefinitely and today's release will fix this and address a number of other combat bugs as well. We'll be sending out the following gift in the next 24 hours for your continued patience and understanding. So, personally, I never ran into this. I did face quite a lot of Lees, but I prioritized this guy. I did not let him get that active off if I could help it. And apparently, if he got it off, well, it was much more powerful than it should be. But it should be getting fixed. This is the compensation just to say, whoopsie. We are going to get 30 trainers, 20 butts, 10 basils, some war cans, some rare gear choice boxes, some epic gear choice boxes, some legendary gear choice boxes, two energy refill choice boxes as well, where you could go for war energy again. Or I would say probably best to go for survival road energy in here, because it is very hard to come by survival road energy or territory energy. I mean, you actually do have to do a territory energy refill this week for your battle pass mission so this would help anyone who actually needed to do that this should be either coming to you via your inbox or it will be in the office section i would assume it'll be in office section but we'll have to wait and see but do expect this hopefully within the next 24 hours as it says which should be within the next 12 of this video did you run into this bug this issue with lee let me know in the comments down below we are going to move on to the next little story though and it is creepy onslaught coming into the game and it's another opportunity to get skulls drop as you can see in the background that is a skull we are going to get skulls drop creepy onslaught the final theme tournament for our haunted skirmish event is almost here creepy onslaught offers a twist on our classic faction onslaught where we try to put extra emphasis on faction collaboration and strategy and add an extra layer of rewards for individual participation. Here's a detailed breakdown of the new changes featured in Creepy Onslaught. Timers will be shortened to 20 minutes per Onslaught battle. That is interesting. We want Creepy Onslaught to feel faster and more intense. By shortening the timer to 20 minutes, we expect to be able to spend more time in combat and battling than simply waiting around for the action to resume. They have also increased the survival bonus points to 500,000 for Diamond League and 250,000 for Platinum League. And it explains we are boosting the survival bonuses you'll receive in the top leagues to try and encourage a variety of playstyles while offering an extra incentive to aim for more challenging encounters as survival bonus points will play a larger role in your overall score increasing diamond rewards we want to properly reward factions who go for the toughest challenges by adding extra rewards in our diamond league compared to platinum adding individual milestones we've heard your feedback so we're adding a new layer of solo mission events to the creepy onslaught to ensure those actively participating in the event get extra recognition compared to those riding their coattail skulls awarded as battle rewards this is what a lot of people will be interested in you'll be rewarded a varying amount of skulls as battle rewards the amount earned each time will be significantly higher than the amounts you were awarded during dark harvest raids so take full advantage if you're aiming for the halloween grim axe so it's actually going to be an increased amount that you can get that is actually going to be interesting i kind of like this so we'll see what it's going to be like this is going to mark the halfway point of the event once creepy onslaught ends so you'll be able to roughly know where you're at with the skulls in the second half of the entire event how much harder you have to work if you do want to get that axe it does also confirm that there will be one other creepy onslaught as it says this will be the first of two creepy onslaughts that we have planned for the haunted skirmish and remember don't miss out on the trick-or-treat roadmap that will be active at the same time now we'll go over the trick-or-treat roadmap in a moment it does also break down some rewards and it says here's a better look at our faction and solo mission events along with the rank rewards offered for diamond league platinum gold silver bronze remain unchanged 
So again, added confirmation about the Creepy Onslaught mission events. The Creepy Onslaught will feature both faction and solo mission events simultaneously to help reward those who truly carry their team through these events. Remember, the faction mission event will be your main source of jack-o'-lanterns. So it's going to be the faction for jack-o'-lanterns, as you can see, when 100 Onslaught battles as a faction will get you some five star recruit tokens some armory tokens and also some jack-o'-lanterns and this scales all the way down to probably around about a thousand onslaught battles where you can get onslaught choice boxes and that's going to be the s class cards we'll take a look at the cards that are available it is going to be jackie and aj alpha and trader storm and carry Ann, and then imani and negan so personally i don't really like the choice crate here as the top four characters don't offer anything for me and i really do like going for the 50s and 40s i have everyone that i want here or the characters that are here i don't think are that great anymore for instance jackie and aj not the greatest characters alpha and trader got them already and but trader is kind of like yeah uh so i'm not really sure i'm going to do this crate actually i'm not sure i probably will stay still take jackie just because I might as well try and go towards another five star or something because I do think she's a great five star. So if you don't have Jackie as a five star, very, very powerful five star leader. I should probably not tell people this anymore because five star arenas is starting to become a bit of a joke. <laughs> it does go over the solo missions as well and you will be able to get S-Class card choice boxes in here but also some armory items, duct tape, blowtorch, that sort of thing. It does look like it goes up to 20 onslaught battles and you can get yourself five extra s-class card choice boxes however it does look like the solo missions have actually got the s-class card choice box of the current week's characters which is aj is the primary but axel as the lesser amount of cards but bigger rewards so this is actually good it's a shame this wasn't available for the faction option as well because i definitely would have picked up axel cards definitely a nice character to pick up and I'll, I'll be happy to pick up what's that 300 of his cards for getting five i'll take that it does also go over the diamond league rank rewards and it says to help you understand the boost we're providing to diamond league rewards better here's the full list of diamond league ranked rewards so remember platinum gold silver and bronze remained unchanged s class card choice box for first gets 18 and then basil's 30 and then it scales down until it gets to a point where no one gets any more s-class card choice boxes and it is going to be under 11. if you're 11th place it looks like you get this and after that i think you don't get anything else i think you don't i mean you'll just get faction trophies towards leagues it does finish up by saying we hope these changes along with the reduced timers and survival bonus points boost will offer one of the most engaging faction onslaughts to date and we look forward to seeing your thoughts on our upcoming creepy onslaught so reduced timers is quite nice i think the rewards could probably be extended a little bit more they should probably just go with brackets this it's kind of strange that onslaught has such a a broken up system in terms of first second third fourth fifth whereas war is like it's, it's i'm pretty sure war is first second third or first second and third and then it's like fourth to eighth so i don't know why it does that in war and doesn't do that in onslaught as well and just give a bit better rewards in the breakdowns like i don't know 20th to 50th should still get like two crates they're competing they aren't actually taking place whereas right now they're getting nothing but that was a quick look at creepy onslaught and what we can expect from the event do give me your thoughts in the comments down below as we do move on to the last little update and it is going to be the trick or treat roadmap which a lot of people have been asking questions about what do i do with my pails what do i do with my pails well it is like i say the trick or treat roadmap and we'll quickly go through it trick or treat roadmap remember all those trick or treat pails you've been collecting for free all week yeah i've also remembered all the times people have asked me what are they for which is a lot i get asked questions a lot and that one i've been hit with quite a lot well now is the chance to use them finally over this weekend and during our next available creepy onslaught the trick or treat roadmap will arrive which you can unlock with your trick or treat pails to collect candy corn from the roadmap now we did already know this roadmap availability although it wasn't really solid set in stone i think it was just kind of like it was going to happen on this weekend but i don't think there was 100 solid times but it's going to start on the friday the 23rd of october at 5 p.m pacific and then it's going to end on the 25th of october at 5 p.m pacific so that's the first roadmap the second roadmap is going to be two weeks later and it's going to be in the non-war weekend again and it's going to start on the 6th of november at 5 p.m pacific and it's going to end on the 8th of november at 5 p.m pacific so it's going to be a pretty much the same sort of timings just on the non-war weekends there is some extended details on the roadmap itself this says the trick or treat pails you have been collecting as a free daily reward during the event will be used to unlock the roadmap if you've been logging in every day so far 
you have had nine chances to collect trick or treat pails for a maximum total of nine trick or treat pails. Unlocking the trick or treat roadmap will cost you one trick or treat pail, and the roadmap will reset every six hours with a total of eight possible runs available. You'll still have one trick or treat pail to spare if you've collected the maximum available. The trick or treat roadmap will consist of one act and five stages. Here's a full breakdown of what is going to be expected. It ranges from S6 to S14. The cost of the stage goes from 10, 10, 20, 20, 20 on the world energy. And also the candy corns that you can get from it look to be around about 125, 185 candy corns total that you can get for your faction. It does finish up the rewards section by saying the candy corn collected by each member of your faction will allow you to progress in the faction mission event allowing you to earn jack-o'-lanterns. Once collected, it will be immediately tracked so you're also free to trade them in for gear rewards in the grey market which is actually nice. I like it when it you sort of like got rewards that count for like two things. If you do all eight roadmaps, you will be able to get 1,480 of these candy corns. And looking at the faction mission event, it doesn't look too bad. It looks like you'll be able to complete it quite reasonably. 24,000 is the top amount for your faction. And as you can get nearly 1.5k each, as long as you've got like 15 to 20 people hitting that top amount of claims, it's great. That means you're not going to be so stressed out about having to finish every roadmap. You should maybe see after hitting a thousand, basically the extras are going to be bonus gear. I would say it's definitely worth doing it if, if you can get yourself up in the middle of the night or six hour roadmaps are not the best. Personally, I like the 12 hour ones the best. They do seem to be the most balanced, but it does look like every single reward in here is going to be accessible as long as your faction collected enough of those pails and actually completes enough of the roadmaps. But that's it for the trick or treat roadmap breakdown and that's how you're going to spend your pails guys. We kind of did know what was coming but we didn't know the full details so it is nice to get full confirmation. But that is also the end of the video guys. We have had bug fixes and a free gift, creepy onslaught details and now the trick or treat roadmap explanation and also just like some reward information which is actually kind of cool. If you have any thoughts about anything in this video please leave them down below. I want to thank you very much for tuning in, and as always, keep on surviving guys, keep on surviving.